There are many different ways in Inkscape to get a border around your objects, but one of my personal favorites is the offset. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use it. Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use the offset path command in Inkscape. So without further ado, let's get into it. So when it comes to adding a border or leaving a gap between your object and the border, you need to keep in mind that when you scale up an object, the distance between the right hand sides and the bottom sides, say, are not going to be equal no matter how you do it. So that leaves you to only scale the vertical handles and then scale the horizontal handles, but it's a lot of guesswork. There is a method, for example, it involves you simply putting a bigger shape than your object over the top, turning off the fill color and then using stroke to path then going back to the path commands and break apart followed by union. This will bring a shape into view that will take into account the stroke width as well. So you can increase the size of your shapes in that way. So today let me give you an example of when to use offset. Now to begin with, we are going to go to the squares and rectangles tool on the left toolbar right here. And then we are going to draw a rectangle around that big. Now as you can see, my rectangle has already got a very thick stroke and no fill colour. That is because of the project that I was doing previously. But I will go back to how it will look for you. So I'll take the stroke off and I will put a standard fill colour on. So yours will look something a little bit like this. Now come to the little circle on the top right corner. Click and drag until it is completely round. Once you've done this, you can then turn the fill off and the stroke on. Now, in order to do that, for the fill, you just click on the color that you want. And if you want it to have no fill, you click on the red X right here. While you're holding shift, that will do exactly the same for your stroke. Now, if your stroke is quite thin, come to the fill and stroke menu, which is right here. Or you can open it if it's not already by clicking this button on the top toolbar. Once you have, come to the stroke style and then increase or decrease the size of the stroke. As you can see, I've got a very heavy stroke of 110.380 and I'm working with pixels. That is about perfect for what we need in the next step. Now the next step for us, if I go over to the edit paths by nodes, as you can see, this is still a standard rectangle. So first we are going to change this into a individual shape. Now because we're using the stroke and no fill color, we are going to use path, stroke to path. Now as you can see, the nodes that have appeared here signifies that this shape has now just been changed into its own individual path. And as you can see, it's also signified in the bottom left corner by saying it's got a black fill and an unset stroke. So what do we do with this next? Well, we get the pen tool. We snap onto the midpoint by making sure we have a snapping enabled in the top right corner. And when you can see the X snapping onto the midpoint, click and then holding control come vertically down to the outside edge and then right click and you have your path. Now if we go back to our select tool and we select both, 
we can go to Path, Division, and we now have two completely separate pieces. Now with snapping still turned on, we are going to hold control, click and drag this one down until it snaps onto the bottom, making this deformed S shape. And again, if we select them both by holding shift and clicking on both of them, we can come to path, union, and we now have our initial shape. Now we can move on to using the offset. Now if we come to path and scroll all the way down, we will find four different offset options that we can use. We have inset, outset, dynamic offset and linked offset. As you can tell by the little icons next to it, inset will reduce the size, outset will increase the size a dynamic offset will allow you to either decrease or increase the size at the same time. And a linked offset will automatically duplicate the original shape and then offset like the dynamic offset. So if we go to a linked offset, I can show you exactly what I mean. Now we've selected it, it looks like nothing has changed. And that is because the changes we need to make are using the Edit Paths by Nodes tool on the left toolbar. Now, as you can see, there is only one little diamond. But if we click and drag with it, as you can see, we drag away. It is increasing the size of the shape, but it's keeping the diameter and the distance away from every side exactly the same. Now, if I was to turn the opacity down, you can see that it has already left the original shape in its place. The difference between doing this offset and doing, it will work in exactly the same way. However, if I was to bring the opacity down on this, as you can see, this is the original shape that I am editing. Now for what we want today, I am going to want to increase the size, which I have already done. But I don't want to be using the dynamic offset. So I undo to get back to the original shape. I'm going to click it, path, linked offset, and then I'm going to increase the size significantly around there will do for me. And then we are going to go to path, object to path. Until you do that final step of path, object to path, it will not finalize any changes you have made. As soon as you go from path, object to path, then it will finalize the shape and it becomes its own individual shape. Now, if I change the color of this and I bring the opacity down, we can do the last little tweaks to the design. I'm going to use the rectangles tool again. We are going to come up to the far right corner of the end of the S just before the curve stops. And then we are going to come all the way down to the opposite end on the bottom. Now, of course, it is still recognizing my previous settings. So we're going to turn off the stroke. And we are going to make sure that the corners are completely straight like this. So now if we take this center piece and we Control alt d or right click and duplicate reduce the size and then holding control i can drag it over until it snaps into position and we can control alt d that and do it on the other side and that gives us a good basis that if we select everything go to the shape builder tool it will give you something that looks 
a little bit like this. Now firstly I want to make sure that I get the center pieces right. So I'm going to combine these parts here and then I'm going to get rid of the parts in the middle oops like so and then we are going to get rid of the gaps here and we're going to join everything else together as one shape and then we are going to OK and as you can see by using the shape builder and the offset tool we have got a very uniform looking design we can now edit everything else that we want to change so i'm going to go with black as the center make sure that the opacity is turned right the way up so now i've increased the opacity on all the colors we have three shapes we have these two black shapes here and the background shape here now i'm going to keep these two shapes black but i am going to do a simple gradient on this one and i want the gradient to go from bottom to top so we're going to come to the fill and stroke menu select the linear gradient and then we are going to go to the bottom color and make sure that a bar is all the way up that's the opacity then we're going to change the colors to the two colors that you want and i think i'm just going to go with what i showed you in the beginning which is like a green and a blue and then we're going to come to the gradients tool which is found by this little green box on the left toolbar and the square point is the start point and the circle is the end point so we're going to make sure that we get that vertical by holding control to get it to lock onto its vertical axis like this now if we go back to our select tool we can take this shape duplicate it by right clicking and going to duplicate and then we can use the dynamic offset and we can make this a border around the entire design so if i turn this white i put on a small border around that and then i come to path dynamic offset using our node tool we can now increase the size to around there would be good and then go to path object to path back to the select tool and drop it to the bottom and as you can see we now have our very own little border but you can take this one step further you can control alt d or right click and duplicate again turn this one completely black you can then use path dynamic offset again a little bit bigger and then if we pass object to pass and turn the blur up to around 20 and the opacity down to around 50 and then back to our select tool drop it to the bottom as you can see you now have a very simple yet effective design and just to give it a little bit more of a dynamic feel you can also rotate it and there you go now if you found this video helpful i would really appreciate it if you let me know in the comments section if you would like to see more suggestions are always welcome and if you would like me to create something for you a custom bespoke design then please by all means get in touch all the information and everything else you need is in the description but until next time i'm going to bid you all a fond farewell say thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one